Welcome, my name is Daniel Molina Cabrera. I'm assistant professor at the University of Granada in Spain. I'm going to give a small talk about my experience using Pluto for Teach. This talk is inside the PlutoCon that was organized this year. And the other talk is teaching computer science and com mega heuristic algorithm using Pluto. This is my email address for contact. And the objective of this talk is about my experience. In a course about intelligent optimization, the students have to solve two different problems using different algorithms. And I made for each one of these problems a notebook using Pluto for visualize to better understanding the problems and the algorithm that the, alg the students have to implement. It. This talk, uh, this notebook are available in the Plutocon demo page, you can put them and you can then edit or run the notebook, notebook locally. For time reason, I'm going to, I already load them, I'm going to show them this notebook. The first notebook is about the first problem, that is called Maximize Diversity Problem, diverse, diversity problem in which we have n data, each data is a vector, and we have to choose m of them, which m lower than m, to maximize the distance between the selected. Other one is wanted a subset that maximizes the sum of the distance between the chosen elements. It's very simple to visualize. We can select it with the notebook a certain number of individuals. For visualization, is use all the data have only two dimensions. In the real problem, the dimensionality is increased, of course. When we ge automatically generate, selecting and with the button, we obtain the distance between all pair of individuals. And we have to select how many individuals we want to choose three or four, they are good value to visualize. This is the code of the function. You can observe that I have a flow, a, ve uh, a vector of flow, and for each pair of individuals, I obtain the distance, uh, put in a vector, and then I give, recharge the sum of this vector. A solution can be done only putting the vector and the random solution is automatically generated. And not only is visualized, is visualized with different color, the chosen element and the, the interconnection between them to visualize the distance. Because the fixing of this solution is the sum of the distance of bit f and this edge and this edge. So it's a simple way of visualization. Of course, this is not a good solution because a good solution will have all the individuals more separated between them. The first algorithm is a local set that describes and this is visualize the, the, the algorithm. If we can apply the local set only one solution, is the initial solution that we previously say, observe here, and it increase the algorithm, run the algorithm more times, we can observe that the solution is better and better and better. That's the best solution the algorithm obtain, and I can visualize which are the solutions that are being evaluated during the algorithm. We can observe how many solutions that are, have been evaluated and visualize them until the, the solution we are obtaining. After the best solution obtained, I generate more solutions, but they, was, they were worst. This is the best solution. There is a, there is algorithm use a complete initial solution randomly generate and then the solution is modified and if the best solution the new solution is better than the previous one is the, the previous one is replaced by the new the new one 
This is a theoretic algorithm. The other algorithm is a greedy algorithm in which they have a criteria, a risk criterion to select the new element to select. First, the initial element is the algorithm, the solution whose distance to the rest of element is bigger. In this case, this is the one we can visualize that the one, the distance to all the others. This is the, the code, and this is the visualization is, is better than the other because we want to maximize the distance. And this is the solution select. Then, using a slider, I can show for each solution the distance to the previous one to identify, visualize which is the best one. It is saved by the algorithm. The best one is the age. We can check that because the age, okay, the age, yeah, the age seems the best option. So you can consider that, consider, could we, we can think that using Pluto because by the reactive nature of the, algo of the framework, we cannot implement the algorithm. It's not true because First, we we'll use a button to start the algorithm, data visualization, and for the next step, I have a checkbox. When I make the checkbox, it's only run when the checkbox is put, I make the select the next one. So I put that. Now, in the selection is the age, and we can observe visualize the distance to all the other solutions. For all the other for all the individuals, it calculate the distance to the first and the second elements. And is the market the distance to the nearest individual of the, of the chosen set. So we can offset and it is identified that the next vector is 14. The next vector is 14. We can check. Yeah, it's seen that the next vector is 14. For a small individual, it's very simple to this algorithm obtain good results. When the dimensional is a lot higher, it's not so easy to obtain the best solution, but it's usually an algorithm that is able to obtain good solution very quickly. So I add that to my set, you can see, and the algorithm is stop actually. But we can see that if we have to choose, for instance, four individuals, or the, that we have to calculate the distance to all the set of three previously selected individuals, and if the market the distance to the closest solution, to the closest individual. This is the first notebook. I hope you can understand. And the second notebook is a different problem in which, in which we have to a group, group, a group, a number of individuals maintaining several constraints. And also we have to maximize, mm, we have to minimize, sorry, the intra distance between them. So for instance, we have this problem of this 10 of 15 individuals, and we have to number, to group them. We have to choose, to select for each one of them which category, which class is going to be members. They have a number of pre, uh, pre selected number of classes is K, and we have several constraints. They consider that individuals that have to be to the same cluster or have to be in different clusters. The group is individuals that have to be in the same and this that have to be in different clusters. We can visualize that with lines. Continuous line means that they have to be in the same cluster and dashed line means that they have to be in different clusters. We have to, we are able to create an initial solution. We can visualize the cluster of each solution via color, and we can to zoom how many constraints on which is the distance. 
that should be in the same cluster, but this constraint is violated, that constraint is violated, and that one is violated. That constraint is fulfilled because they have different color and the line is that. Here we have this constraint is fulfilled, this constraint is fulfilled, this constraint is fulfilled, but this constraint is not fulfilled. It's easy to observe that. And then the algorithm, the greedy algorithm, is different because in this algorithm we use um, a class, a centroid, and then we are going to choose for each element the cluster which centroid is closer, always maintaining as maximum the constraints. This is the initial cluster, initial constraint, centroid, sorry, initial centroid, and we can choose for each one of the solution the distance to the centroid, showing that it's always selected the closer one. The closer is the green one, so we choose green, and for that is the green also, for that the closer, well, that this time. For here, for here, for here, for here, they're different. Here is blue, the closer, here the one. This one was not, the, clo the closer was not the green one, but if we want to maintain the constraint, should be green one, because that one is green one, is green also, and this one should be the same color, the same cluster that that one, to not violate any constraint. And we can visualize in that way. Then, when we have selected for all solution the corresponding cluster, then we, uh, we the centroid could be updated considering the new average of all the individual to that class. That one, that one, and is update. The solution will be updated. The final solution obtained is that, that violate zero constraints and have a distance is, is adequate. Uh, of course, they have also the, the local cell algorithm but we are not going to explain because uh, I have no good with time, but we can consider the evolution of the solution. I'm going to put uh, more individuals to make more difficult the problem to see the convergence the figure of convergence. Here. Mm, yeah, that's a problem sometimes when the slider is not on the top. Here we can see, observe the evolution, a new initial solution. Initially it violates three constraints, then one constraint, then zero constraints and the distance could be reduced. We can observe that here, how when the evolution is increased, the fitness is reduced. Well, that's all about my presentation. I hope you consider it interesting enough and you, I encourage you to use Pluto for teaching because it's a very good tool to visualize not only the problem, but also the algorithm, even complex algorithm. Thank you. Okay. Oh, well. Great talk, I, great talk Daniel. Uh, I hope you more or less understand. The idea of my notebook is to make more visual, is to visualize the problem to the student to make them more understandable for them. 
uh, about your question first, you say that what's the feedback from a student? Uh, first, uh, my college use a typical PowerPoint with, uh, with explaining, exp some slide explaining the problem. But when I try in my, in my group of students visualizing with notebook, they told me that they understand better the problem. And not only the problem, but the solution they have to, we are expecting them to prepare, to implement it. This is very good because they say, I didn't understand before, but now I understand that. So it's a very good to visualize always because the formula is today, you can put a lot of formula and say, eh, I don't understand. They say they understand, but it's nothing at all. It's not true. Um, I saw to the other teacher, because I'm one of the teachers in that course, and the other teacher, when saw that, say, oh, it's wonderful. You can put a video in the web of the course, because all the students could see that, and I prepare a small video like that, and showing that. And this is very good, because this was my first time I used Pluto. I, I work in MetaHolistry, that they are algorithm that have to implement a very difficult problem. Um, the, the thing with that is usually you have to use traditionally C++ or the majority of the people in my in my topic use MATLAB. But the problem with MATLAB is I have to use a class that you need problem with license. It's not free software and I love, I love a lot Julia. And when I realized Pluto last, last week in the Julia com, I say I have to try that in my course. And this is, I expect it for next algorithm, they have to implement it uh, starting from next week, prepare another notebook to visualize also how the steps are going to have to be. Usually, initially I thought that it interesting because I spent a lot of time thinking how could do visualize all the algorithm. But I, I realized that with check button and with the button, you can more or less more interactive. Um, it's not actually the interaction, but more or less you simulate the iteration because for understand, the student only needs two or three iteration of the algorithm to understand the algorithm. You not, don't need to run. Actually, I run 100 of the iteration for all the algorithm and you can visualize the result. But to understand, which two or three iteration is enough, I think. Yeah, I think the, the magic spot is when you move the sliders and you yeah. see the visualization change and it all just fits. I think that's yeah. the magic Yeah, make sense. Everything has made sense. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. on YouTube are very positive. Go love your presentation. Yeah. Uh, one person said, if I had such notebooks during algorithms course, I would definitely have them as <laughs> I'm sure your students understand algorithms much better. Um, yeah. All right. Thank you again, Daniel. Let's talk soon. Thank you for you. Yeah. Thank you. And um, Thank next you. up, we'll go to a presentation Bye. by Benjamin, one of Kudo's developers, about uh, Visualizing visualizing cell dependencies and the execution mm -hmm. barrier. Okay. Hello. Hi. And bye. 